23 and verse 54 tells us that it was the preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. Now, the context of this scripture is that Jesus is still on the cross. He is just about to breathe his last, and it tells us that it was the preparation day. In Bible times, they didn't have names for the days like we do today, Monday, Sunday, Tuesday, and so forth, but rather they had numbers for the days, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then Sabbath, or the seventh day. Now, the sixth day was often called the preparation day because they were preparing for the seventh day, or the Sabbath. And so in Luke 23, 54, it tells us that it was the preparation day that Jesus was on the cross, and the Sabbath was about to begin. Luke 23, 55, And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to to the commandment. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. Now this is very fascinating because the account that we're reading in the Gospel of Luke wasn't written till some 40 years after Jesus had been crucified, died, buried, and was resurrected. So Luke had not even written down these words until some 40 years after these events have happened. But even 40 years after the death of Jesus, he is still referring to the seventh day as the Sabbath according to the commandment. And so we have no passing away of the Sabbath law or commandment here. Also, we find it very interesting that the women who so uh, magnified Christ as their Savior, even in his death, they were not going to break the commandment. They had brought spices and, and ointments to, to prepare the, his body for burial. And even in that tremendous experience, they still broke away and they kept the Sabbath and then returned after the Sabbath was over to finish that work on the Savior's body. Of course, not knowing that he had risen at that point. Another amazing thing that we find is that Jesus himself kept the Sabbath in his death. It was the preparation day that he actually breathed his last. And as the Sabbath began to come in, he was resting in the tomb on that day. And so even in Jesus' death, he was keeping the Sabbath. And he did not begin the work of building his church until early Sunday morning, the first day of the week. And so again, he rested on that seventh day of the week. And he began the work of starting the new church on the first day of the week. George Vandeman, who's written a, an excellent book called A Day to Remember, had this to say about this experience. How can we see his followers refusing to desecrate the sacred hours even with their labor of love? How can we see him dying on the cross because the law could not be compromised even to save his own life? How can we stand in the blazing light of Calvary and say it doesn't matter? Again, God is calling us to remember the Sabbath day because it's a tremendous gift that he has given mankind to preserve that relationship that he has with each one of us. It's a day that he's blessed, a day that he's made holy, and he doesn't want us to miss out on that experience. Matthew 24, 20, we're still answering the question, did Jesus in any way come to do away with the Sabbath? Did he expect us to keep it even after his death? Matthew 24, 20 is an amazing prophecy. Jesus says, And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath day. Now Jesus is saying that there is going to be a destruction of the temple. And he's telling the followers that they're to pray that, they're to, that the flight that they're going to have to make from that experience wouldn't be in the winter or on the Sabbath day. Now this was some 40 years after Jesus had died. It happened in in uh, 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed and the Roman armies came and surrounded Jerusalem, only the Christians, according to many of the historians of the time, were the ones who survived that experience. The Roman so soldiers began to gather around the city and the Christians remembered what Jesus had said. And they fled the city. They didn't turn around to grab anything that they owned, but they just fled. And the Christians survived, but those who didn't believe in the words of Christ actually were destroyed in that awful, uh, terrible experience that happened to Jerusalem in 70 A.D. What was Paul's custom regarding the Sabbath? We know that people kept the Sabbath before 
Uh, it was given at Mount Sinai. We know that the Jews kept the Sabbath. We know that Jesus kept the Sabbath. What about his apostles? What about those who blazed the good news message after Jesus ascended into heaven? Well, Acts chapter 17 and verse 2, And Paul, as his custom was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scripture. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Sometimes people will say, well, Sam, the only reason he was going into the synagogue on the Sabbath was because that's when he could speak with the Jews. Well, here we find that he's reasoning or persuading the Jews and the Greeks. Notice what it says in Acts 13, 42. The Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, this was the perfect opportunity if the Sunday was the new Sabbath or if the Sabbath day was done away with for Paul to pull these new Gentile converts to the side and say, hey, it really doesn't matter when uh, we get together, just as long as we get together. He could have easily told them that the Sabbath had been changed or that they could meet any time, but he didn't. But rather, the scripture goes on to say, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. And so here you find the Apostle Paul keeping the Sabbath. Matter of fact, as you move through the book of Acts, you'll find that Paul held 84 meetings on the Sabbath day. Will God's end time people keep the Sabbath? Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 talks about a special group of people who are alive at the end of time. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. The Bible says, And the dragon, or Satan, was enraged with the woman. Now, a woman in Bible prophecy is always a church. So the dragon is angry with the church. What kind of church is this? And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's get another one in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Just a couple pages ahead. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here the Bible says, Here is the patience of the saints. Who are these saints? I want to be one of these saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Let's get another one. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Revelation 22 and verse 14, the Bible says, Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. This end time people are a people who recognize and they keep God's Ten Commandment law. And so I want to be a part of that group and I'm sure that you do too. James 2.10 tells us, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. And so if we are teaching and trying to tell people to keep the Ten Commandments, but we in our private lives maybe are lying, or stealing, or any other one of the Ten Commandments. It doesn't matter if we keep nine of them. If we're breaking one, James 2.10 tells us that we are guilty of all. Will God's people keep the Sabbath in heaven? Well, we find in Isaiah chapter 66, a very interesting clue to the answer to this question. Isaiah chapter 66, and verses 22 and 23. Here is a promise about the new heavens and the new earth that are coming. Isaiah 66 and verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, For the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And so just as Revelation is warning us not to worship the beast, but to worship the Creator, here in Isaiah we're told that that worship, because it is pure, because it is true, will continue even into eternity. And of course that worship will happen, as it's stated here in Isaiah, on the Sabbath day. What three precious things does God say the Sabbath is a sign of? Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 20. God says, And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you. Now notice he doesn't say, Hallow the Jewish Sabbath, or the day that I gave to the Jews, or anything like that. He says, And hallow my Sabbaths. 
and they shall be assigned between